Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to attack a little bit of a different topic. We're going to attack protein intake. Now, I'm not a registered dietitian, but I have been doing this nearly 30 years, and I'm going to show you what I know on protein intake and maybe give you some helpful tips on not only gaining muscle, but doing it correctly. The first thing we need to know is what is our lean mass? The lean mass is telling us what our body weight is with zero body fat. So for me, for example, my lean body mass is 238.5 pounds. This is what I did a week ago on my bioprint testing or metabolic analytics, which is a 12 site skin full test. Now this is going to tell me how much protein I need per day. Now everybody will argue you need more, you need less. In my general thought process, this is about what I have figured out in the last 30 years. At 238, I need about 240 grams of protein per day to sustain this amount of muscle. Okay, maybe even progress that amount of muscle. So 240 grams, about one gram per pound of lean mass, not body weight, okay? Right now my body weight is 260. So at 240 grams, the first thing I need to know is, well, how much is that per meal? Well, let's take a look. So 240 grams in five meals per day on average is gonna be about 48 grams of protein per meal. Now that means I need to eat about 48 grams about every three to four hours, okay? So if I'm eating 48 grams every three to four hours, that's gonna equal a really pretty healthy diet. Obviously we can't do that with potato chips or poor choice carbohydrates. We're gonna to have to do that with lean meats and possibly protein shakes if one, we don't prep our food or two, we're lazy. So once we understand this, now we can get to kind of how much protein intake we should be doing and all those types of things. The next big thing we need to know is protein timing. Now I am not a huge fan of protein timing because if you're eating five meals a day, what's the difference? But if you want to get to the nitty gritty of it, in my opinion, I think you need to get protein in probably an hour before you work out and then you need to get protein in probably 30 minutes or directly after post-workout. Now what you might notice is that if you're in a super depleted state, taking in branch chain amino acids while you train is not only a flavorful drink, but it can also help retain some of the protein degradation due to a low caloric deficit. But what I find is that if you're eating, you know, we were talking about that 48 grams, if I'm trying to get 48 grams pre-workout, which for me is about 7.30 in the morning, right, 7.30 a.m., okay? Now when I get done working out, it's about 9.30, okay? And I'm having another 48 grams at about 9.30 a.m., okay? Now this starts the day off perfect because I train in the morning, right? So if I'm lifting at about 8.45 a.m., this is giving me my perfect window. Now, there has been some studies out to show that metabolic changes or protein Synthesis happens faster in a trained athletes and not as fast in untrained athletes But I still think if you are eating protein before workouts and after workouts You're kind of hitting that window and then the one of the most important meals I think is that if I got done training around 9 30 a.m. At about 12 30 p.m. I'm getting another 48 grams Okay, now that meal right there is really starting to attack my protein synthesis while my body's in a kind of a what I call a sponge state. So usually the, the 24 hours after you train is when the body's really gotten anabolic in that particular sense. So we need to make sure the protein's happening like we talked about every three to four hours, about every 48 grams. And that's if you weigh 240 pounds of lean mass, which is not very many people. But you can do the math yourself if you know your lean body mass. So the point is, is I think the pre, the post, and then three hours later getting those 48 grams of protein is crucial in order for you to make decent progress. But what it also does is what I like about protein intake and why we're talking about it today is that if you're focusing on protein, a lot of times it will change what you're doing with your diet. Meaning that if you're always thinking, hey, I got to get 48 grams of protein in, it's really hard to do that at like a fast food restaurant. It's really hard to do that with poor food selections at just a gas station. If you're thinking quality proteins, you're going to make quality food choices and that's why I like protein. The other thing that we need to attack is protein type. Now, there are multiple different types of proteins and different kinds of meats and people have slow and fast acting. I'll give you what I know, which is fairly limited, but works really well. One, we know that whey protein is fast acting, okay? 
So that means that whey protein might be a good selection post-workout, right? It's gonna give you that immediate bump in protein and so heavily absorbable very quickly. But what I have found with whey is that whey drastically messes up my stomach, my body doesn't like it, and then it starts to restrict the amount of food I wanna eat throughout the day because I feel bloated and not good. So what I use is beef protein. And a lot of times beef protein is made from beef collagen. Um, and what I have found is beef protein almost acts in my stomach like a real meal. So I drink a small beef protein shake and an hour and a half later, I'm ready to eat another 48 grams. Whereas when I drink whey, I feel like I'm bloated. My body doesn't like dairy products, which whey and casein are, are heavily revolved in and that's what they're made from. But I find that beef protein reacts way better to my system and allows me to sustain and maintain the meals that I need to eat. So I use beef protein probably 80% of the time um, when I'm trying to take in shakes, okay? But really try to prep your foods instead of doing it from shakes. Where we get protein from, obviously is gonna be meats, some, you know, different beans and, and vegetables and things like that can have trace amounts of protein, medium amounts of protein. Most of our protein from what I have um, experienced in my lifetime is getting it from meat is probably the best source in order for you to get stronger and bigger and gain more muscle tissue. Now, where do we get protein from if we have to utilize supplements? We go to Canada and I recommend Canadian supplements to my firemen and everybody that we train based on the fact that it's heavily regulated and if something's in it that's not supposed to be in it, the government finds out, shuts their doors and makes them reformulate and change their things, which I find should be a massive checklist into anything that you ingest. So where do I get my stuff from? Well, one company that we get all of our stuff from is ATP Lab. There's another company called Designs for Health that are awesome. I have found that this stuff sits in my stomach really well and actually has changed my blood work. So key takeaways today, wrapping up, is on protein intake is eat constantly. You need protein before, after, maybe even some branched chain amino acids during, and a consistent amount of protein throughout the day in order for your body to not only absorb protein correctly, but also to not allow your digestive system to kind of, kind of process all that, okay? The next thing is base your protein intake off of lean mass. So I know people talk about 1.5 grams per pound of whole body weight and all that. In my opinion, I think it's complete overkill. You really don't need more than about a gram, maybe a little bit more per pound of lean mass in order to gain proper muscle tissue and strength, okay? That the key is, is that you have to eat constantly in order for your body to absorb it. So if I'm gonna try to eat 240 grams of protein in one sitting to try to meet my daily protein requirement, my body's not gonna be able to utilize that. If I split it into five 40 plus gram per meal um, meals, then I'm gonna have a better chance of absorbing it, utilizing it, and not wasting it or causing gastric distress. The next thing I think is one of the most important factors is get stuff that's regulated. And the other thing that I think is, is like for me personally, the beef uh, made protein sits in my stomach better and doesn't affect my meal intakes. So when I need to increase more protein, then I use a beef supplement and it doesn't bloat me like way and mess up my, my stomach or my appetite. So I hope this helps a little bit. I hope this starts to get your brain turning. Obviously there's a lot more factors than this, but I think these are some key ones to start sticking to and get you prepped to not only making more progress, but starting to eat a little cleaner. Delts, rhomboids, lower trap, great posture exercise. This is a central nervous system deload. So we're actually gonna deload the brain and the spinal cord and we're gonna overwork the muscle tissue.